Let's start with the volatility story now, the picture we see and why it's different to what we experienced in February. Yeah, so obviously if you look at the action in equity cash, it's very concerning, right? You look at um, cyclical stocks, you know, stocks that are closely correlated with the economic cycle and they're doing horribly. So if you look at cyclicals versus defensives, it's telling you something about the economy that perhaps there is a slowdown coming that hasn't been reflected in the data. It's fundamentally, they're still very good. But if we look for confirmation in other markets, credit, as people have been talking about, has been very, very resilient. Um, and then the equity volatility market has, interestingly enough, not been very reactive. So the VIX is in the low 20s, but it's still below the, the highs that we saw in February 2018, August 2011, uh, and August of 2015. So you've really not seen a reaction in short dated volatility. You're not seeing any panic bid for hedging. And more interestingly, you're not seeing a bid to longer dated volatility either. You're not seeing the stuff that would react if people thought there was a recession coming in the next six months or one year. That stuff's not reacting. Well, that's what I think is really interesting. That you're not seeing the bid in longer dated volatility like, say, 2011, 2015. Do you think that is complacency or that is just a market that is basically saying this will wash out like it did in February and the VIX curve will normalize once again? I don't think it's complacency. Um, so if you look at equity long short performance, it's it's horrible, right? Um, equity long short performance by one stat I looked at is it's having their worst month since August of 2011. So I think what, what's happening is people are taking down gross, they're deleveraging instead of hedging, right? So they're saying, okay, I've just got to de-risk the book totally. I'm not going to bother with hedging. Do you think February was unique in the sense that it was a monster short squeeze of the short volatility strategy that we're not really used to that and we shouldn't compare the experience we have now to February because of that? That's a very good point. So I think the the bid to short dated vol, the bid to the VIX you saw in February was driven in a large part by uh, stretch positioning and short volatility. A lot of that positioning has gone away. You know, the XIV and all that stuff has, has gone away. Um, but I still think it's important to look at August 2011 and 2015 where there were more systemic, there were more concerns about the economy and look at what volatility did back then, look at what credit did back then compared to what's happening well, now. Let's look at 2011, 2015. Did we see a pickup in cross asset vol like we're not seeing today? You definitely did. So you saw credit spreads widen out in 2011, definitely. Uh, you saw a bid, a real bid to longer dated vol that we're just not seeing now. Uh, and then the important Thing. Look at volatility in other asset classes too. So if you look at rates volatility, FX volatility, credit volatility, all stuff really hasn't moved. You know, e even like EMFX, you know, EM credit is still held in very, very strong over the past couple of weeks. So for now, this looks to us like a U.S. equity centric event. Which begs the question: What is driving the equity vol that isn't driving rates and isn't driving FX? Um, I, I think it's underperforming. I look, I think active managers have perhaps implicitly become momentum investors and a lot of the stocks that have taken us higher you know the Amazon's Facebook's of the world they've been doing very poorly so you've seen an unwind in some of the most favored names and I think that's that's weighing on performance that's weighing on markets